I've actually known James um, for about 20 years. Um, we were in a youth orchestra together in South Africa when James was a clarinetist and I was a violinist. Things, things have changed. Yeah. you still play the clarinet? Sometimes. <laughs> when I'm probably half the size I was then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing for us is that we've had all these years to get to know James and play together in various combinations, doing different things. And um, yeah, it feels in entirely natural to be working alongside each other very regularly. It's always very successful. We were both um, on the Young Concert Artists Trust for, I think, four or five, four years or something like that. Um, and that's when we first started performing together because we get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of performance opportunities and the sort of mentorship that comes with being on, being a Waikat artist. We've received awards from the Orletti Bottoni Trust, um, which gives you the sort of freedom to pursue different projects um, in a way that certainly wouldn't be possible without their support. Um, and so we both really benefited from, from being part of those two things. And have we both, we've both been um, emerging talent. Have you been, have you, or have you emerged? I'm, sure, I'm an you, emerging talent. Are you still emerging? I don't know. I think I'm a spotlight or something like that. Right. <laughs> Well, I think as coming in as a guest to a quartet is always quite scary because you feel like you upset the equilibrium of a, a, a sort of a family where everyone has their roles and you're not quite sure how you should. Most of my work being with singers you have a very different approach to rehearsals and, and um, well, what I always find with instrumentalists are really quite nasty to each other com comparatively. <laughs> <laughs> and very direct, there's no sort of going around the, the, the bush with things. But knowing everyone here very well and being friends with, it makes, friends with everyone makes it much easier. Sometimes uh, it's not so easy, you feel like you cause a divorce more than you, <laughs> than you, you make, a, make a happy family. The first top is Mozart, kind of effervescent and light and, and lovely, and the Algar, especially with its historical context and what was going on in the world at the time, provides a, a weightiness to the second half, which, is, which hopefully will be wonderful. The Algar certainly, certainly in this country, is um, hugely celebrated, um, but it's, it's a piece which does require a lot of um, a sort of fundamental similarity of approach in order to make it work because there's so much kind of rubato and flexibility. And I think when you know each other well, you take risks as well, which mm -hmm. you wouldn't do with, with um, a group that you're not so familiar with or people you're slightly scared of or um, anything like that. It really makes you raise your game when you, when you um, come on stage here. You can't but play your best, it's just the way it is. The sound is so fantastic and um, the audience as well are extremely warm and receptive. Um, it's always very special. <laughs>